Hi everybody, welcome back. My name is Claire. I've just done a wandering straight pour, um, some amazing colours, but unfortunately I used a colour um, called Wedgwood and it's taken over. It's like a sort of very dull blue. It's quite pretty, but it's taken over. And so the whole painting looks quite grey. Um, so I'm going to do another pour now with the leftovers. I'm going to do a wandering ring pour, but leave out the Wedgwood. Um, so let's get started. So I'm using some pinks, purple, blue, and turquoise. I will put the link for the previous video, the wandering straight pour, in the description of this video. So you can see, I went through on that video, all the paints, the manufacturers of the paints. Um, the only addition is I've just got this lovely pale pink. I felt they were others were a bit dark. I wanted something paler. So I've just gone with a little bit of um, Amsterdam, uh, which one is it, Persian? Yeah, Amsterdam Persian Rose. It's not quite thick enough still. They're all mixed with PVA glue and water. Um, and again, I'll put the recipe I, that I used for that in the description. So I'm going to layer up some little silicon cups. Um, I'm just deciding on my order. It's they, just quite dark round here. So shall I mix it up like that? I think that's what I will do. So I'm going to try and do a couple of layers of each colour in each cup. I'm using a 40 by 50 centimetre canvas. It's a previous painting I've done. I've put gesso on to prime it so I can reuse the canvas. So I'm going to do ring pours. Um, how shall I do it? Um, I quite like the idea of going a bit diagonally. I think the most important thing really is I just have to take my time and do this really slowly. Um, Wow, wow, this bit not so much. It took ages to get the cup going, but once I got it going, wow, that looks amazing. This bit oh, looks awful. I wonder if I can just use that. I might even smudge that over. But this bit, wow, love it, absolutely love it. I wonder if I start in a similar position, then I can always scrape that bit off if I can't get it going. I don't know why, it always happens. I can never get it going. Oh, actually, that's better. Maybe I've just got the, the motion now. That's better. Oh my goodness. Now I am excited about this. Let's turn it round so I get the turquoise over here this time.
I am really, really excited about this. Wow, what an amazing just jumble of colours. Right, I'm going to put a flow extender round. I've got some leftover paint from my previous pour and it's just the scraped paint. So it's just a sort of bluey colour. I'm going to put some of this down as a flow extender. So what will happen as I tilt it out, it will push against this and this will all get pushed off the canvas, but hopefully keep a bit more of that beautiful detail. Right, the bit that I definitely, definitely need to get rid of is here. And there's, there's the biggest bit of negative space there of um, spare, spare canvas. So let's go off that corner first. There's lots of paint on here, so I can really tilt quite a lot off. Wow, the lines. My goodness, this could be my new favourite technique. Right, looks like I'm going down to this corner. It's good to keep the, when you start pouring it out, good to keep the beginning of the cup at the edge of the canvas so that you can tilt it off easily. Because it's, as you saw, it just, it often just takes a while to get going with the ring pour to get the motion, to get the paint flowing out nicely. So all I'm trying to do at the moment is get the canvas covered without tipping off too much of the design. And then once it's covered, I can then just have a good look at the composition and decide which bits I like, where I, if I want to tilt more off, I can, I can then decide where to do that. Right, so I'm going to get the weight back to the centre and then I'm just going to have a look and see what I like, what I don't like. Oh my goodness, I like it all. I like it all. Do you know, I think I might leave it. I love it. Oh, it's so cool. I'm missing a bit of white. I think if I do it again, I should put white in. It's going to be quite a dark painting. Thank goodness for the pale, uh, pale pink. don't think I want to do anything there's no I, I love it all it's slightly murkier here but I don't want to risk tipping that off because I'll lose this amazing bit and this amazing no I'm leaving it right I'm going to give it another torch that will create a few more speckles and cells and then I'll get you in for a close-up I am so excited by this new technique I have never done this before and wow, what a cool painting. Um, I love it. It's quite dark. I think it will be quite a dark painting. Um, I'll add white next time. But let's just look at these details. The lines are just, oh my goodness, they're just amazing. And I love every single colour. The colours work really well and they haven't muddied. So I put really contrasting colours next to each other in the cup. That, Like for example there, pink and turquoise. And they haven't muddied. There is no muddying at all. Oh, I love it. Just look at the contrast and the different directions of the lines up against each other. 
so interesting and it's really shimmery i don't know if you can see the sparkle there everything is shimmering everything is sparkling um there's a few little speckles little air bubbles um so sometimes i don't like that but i actually do quite like it because it's such a sort of choppy crazy looking painting actually to have a few little spots and speckles in it i quite like i like the composition because you've just got these different lines oh i love it i'm so happy uh, right i'll be back when it's dry so it's now dry just look at the depth in it the it it just it just amazes me because it just looks like for example this line here this looks like it's coming out towards me therefore there it's going back there this looks really dark deep far back and then this is coming out towards me here this is coming outwards and outwards um it's absolutely fascinating um, I am so inspired by it. It's a little bit dark, but I am so inspired because I just think the sky's the limit with this technique. There are so the end. The possibilities are endless. I am going to do lots of different colours, lots of different um, uh, designs. So I'd quite like to do one with just some straight lines and tilt it out. I'd quite like to do one with a sort of S shape or a sort of wave, and then tilt it out. Um, I just yeah i'm just absolutely fascinated by it and look at all the lines they're just beautiful and even there the depth there so because you've got such a dark color there that looks like it's it's deeper and then the pink looks like it's it's sticking out towards you a little bit more towards me um it's i'm just really really inspired by it Um, I just love the effect of the lines sort of wrapping over itself. Um, I think my the bit that I'd least like is in the centre here. So I think it's got a bit wobbly in the centre there. Um, so I think I made a slight mistake there. I shouldn't have doubled back on itself, on myself with it. Um, but I was just experimenting. Um, the colours are absolutely gorgeous. I wish it was a little bit lighter. So the whole painting is quite dark. Um, but I wish I had a bit more of that lighter pink in there. Um, let me show you the shine on this. Can you see all the iridescent? That turquoise, iridescent turquoise is just beautiful. So really, really shimmery painting. So yeah, really, really happy with it. But this is just the beginning. I really feel this is the... This is the inspiration for um, several more paintings to come. Um, so let me know what you think. Um, please leave me comments. Please do hit the thumbs up button if you like it. Great. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.